All right, so we're here in the basement brewery today, and before we get started with anything, first I wanted to thank everybody that's uh, been subscribing to our channel and um, all of the feedback we've gotten. All you guys are giving us shout outs in your videos. There's so many of them, I can't think of all of them um, right now, but you guys, the response has been overwhelming. As of this recording, we were at like 92 subscribers, so that's pretty phenomenal. Um, with me today is uh, guest brewer mark rife and uh he's gonna actually brew on the system today uh because of the fact that it is kind of cold outside we'll talk to mark and ask him what uh, he's been doing and what his methods have been and uh so how long have you been brewing uh mark i've been brewing for a little over four years brian and uh started out as an extract brewer and uh, did a couple extract batches and then moved to all grain pretty quickly thereafter uh, predominantly do the brew in the bag method um, for a couple reasons. I just, uh, it's a whole lot less cleanup and seems like a whole lot less effort in a lot of ways. Um, there is a little more to it than most people think as far as the science behind it. And, uh, you know, you can, can achieve pretty good results and pretty consistent results if you've studied a little bit about it and, uh, are into reading about what you're doing. You know, a lot of people get into it just like with all grain brewing and have some issues and, uh, but that that's predominantly how I've been brewing. I'm excited to be over here to brew on your system. I love the electric system. Um, brewed on it a couple times with you before and have really enjoyed it. And I hope next year to actually have an electric brew in a bag system because my house doesn't have a garage. It's cold outside. It's windy. It's nasty. Electric's quiet. It's clean. It's nice. And uh, it's a lot warmer down here. All right. So today we're going to be brewing uh, my Cottontail Pale Ale, which is an American pale ale that I've brewed for the last three hop growing seasons uh, with my fresh hops. I uh, usually brew it right at the same day that I pick the hops from my garden. Uh, it's made with Chinook and Cascade, and um, it's a great wet hop pale ale. It's very sessionable, and just about everyone that's tried it, even uh, your lighter beer drinkers, have tended to really enjoy it. Um, today we're going to use um, some store-bought hops, but also the last of my uh, hops that were frozen from my garden this season. So you said your garden, um, how long, what, what all varieties are you growing? And then like how, how long you've been doing those and you know, what, what, uh, what's going on with that? I've had, um, I have four varieties of hops in my garden. I have Chinook, Cascade and, um, uh, East Kent Golding and Willamette. My, uh, Willamette and East Kent Goldings have produced absolutely nothing in the first three years they've been in the ground other than just a few cones. Um, but my Cascade and Chinook have, uh, produced very well. And, uh, if the, uh, other two varieties don't produce this year, they're probably coming out of the ground and getting replaced. Yeah. I haven't had the same issue with mine with the Willamette and the Tetnanger. Um, the Tetnanger produced about three cones last year. So I'm kind of the same way. If it doesn't produce anything this next year, yank it out. My Chinook and Centennial were beasts. I know your Chinook was a beast. I mean, you got quite a bit of hops there. Uh, grab those and show them for the camera. Yeah, this is, this just, some... uh, this is the last of it. You know, yep. after brewing a couple batches, I've got uh, a couple of them just left over stuck in the freezer and we'll be using them up today. Cool. So um, what's uh, what's like the base of the recipe you were going to brew today? Uh, it's a really simple recipe. Not Nothing too complex. Just basically a little two row and a little bit of uh, 60L for color. And then... Um, you know chinook and cascade throughout it's really basically pretty simple uh good tasty recipe uh, i think this one ends up what should end up about five percent abv okay sounds like a good drinker to me i think i think i'll split a batch with you sounds like so plan. all let's right do it. so let's go do it So here we are, we're well into the mash. Been circulating for a while now. Really nice circulation. The wart is nice and clear. 
Everything is going along good. I wish you could smell it. It smells awesome. Very nice. All right, so we're almost the end of the mash. Um, we're gonna go ahead and crank the hot liquor tank temperature up to 170. And then wait till the light blinks and then Midas touch, I guess. <laughs> I've been holding it 152 for almost an hour now. Alright, so we reached that point in the day where we're going to mash out. Um, hot liquor water temperature is 170. Mash temp is about 167, 166, somewhere pretty good. So go ahead and let it rip, Mark. <laughs> that was a trap That's set to. I sprung a trap on you there. Alright, and then we need to get this one to here, correct? Correct. Shouldn't be any water coming out of that one, so. Alright. Alright, so we're ready to crank the pumps back on. Yep, you're good. Crank that one back on too. This one? Let's fill up the, let's put some hot water in the uh, mash tun first. Okay, so <coughs> actually, your hot, your hot liquor tank valve, open it up. Alright, now open your two coil valves. And we'll pull the lid off and see where, we'll watch the water fill up in there over top of the green bed. Got some water flowing in yep. there. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and dial back the top of the coil. This one? Mm -hmm. you, can turn it, you can turn it all the way off. And then we'll start to get a little bit of flow of wort here. I'll tell you when we got something. A little less. That right there is good. Yep. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and crank your <coughs> mash tun flow back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Get some water going through there. If you want to look at the rate that this is coming out and kind of match that with that. on that maintain the heat and the wart collection continues looking nice and orange maybe a little reddish we got our hot liquor tank or I mean our mash tun with plenty of water over the grains everything's rinsing real nice Glass. Pretty light color, hard to see. Exactly. It's there. Alright, so now that the element is covered, um, no reason for us not to go ahead and crank on the heat. So, go ahead and flip the switch. We are live. Let's see what happens here. And we have bubbles. No sense in waiting until we get our whole volume of wort to start heating it. We'll start heating it now. Back in a little bit. Alright, so we're continuing to sparge and we got uh, right at 8 gallons. Oh, I'm sorry, almost 9 gallons. Uh, few more to go. Elements still working in there. 
Getting a little bit of protein on top. That'll break nicely whenever we get it to a boil. Alright, so we got pretty close to our volume. Still got the element going on, heating there. And holding it 180. And crank it up to a boil here shortly. Alright, so we got our volume of wart and we have set the PID to the pulse width modulation and we've got it set to 100%. Uh, I love how quiet the electric is. It's just silently coming up to a boil. Waiting on the pop additions. I'm all laid out here ready to go. I'm going to supplement some of the fresh hops from Mark's Hop Garden with some 2013 Chinook from Yakima Valley Hops. Good place to get your hops at. And now the real fun begins. Clean up. Spent grains. Those should be turned into dog biscuits or something oh, somewhere. Oh yeah. Or maybe some. Or into the compost spent, bin. Spent grain bread or compost. Yeah. yeah. My if you don't mind this my, stench. My chickens love this stuff. All right. Well, guess what? There you go. They have ten pounds of spent grains now. That's right. Well, not. 10, I'm sorry. Twenty-two pounds of spent grain. Well, Mark is a little vertically challenged, so watch it. Employ, <laughs> employ the step stool. <laughs> We're not watching the pot, so it'll boil. We're not watching the pot, so it'll boil. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we have the boil breaking through there. Um, at this point we can probably crank the uh, pulse width modulation down to about 74 I think something like that and that will allow us to maintain a good boil without boiling over hopefully looks like the marshmallow man from Ghostbusters <laughs> Yeah, that's why I upgraded from a 15 gallon pot to a 20 and a half gallon pot because I had that issue. It was uh, actually, if you want to cycle that element, oh, that's much better. All right, dump those hops in. And then uh, here's the hop sack. We'll put the <coughs> fresh ones in there. You smell the smell for the camera. Oh, yeah. Very good. Alrighty. We'll be back in a little bit. Beautiful. I guess I probably should turn on the fan now. Yep. Since we got steam coming out everywhere. There we go. Alright, so we did our initial gravity reading and we were supposed to be at 1050 um 1048 and we wound up being at 1054, so efficiency was set at 72%. Uh, hadn't brewed this one before, so I think we overshot that by a little bit, but I never complain about overshooting it by a little bit. So we're just slapping in a 20 minute edition of the uh, homegrown Chinook hops. Nice. Yes. Smelling good. Got a nice, great, fruity, piney scent going on so far. Smelling wonderful. Alright, so we're close to the end. Um, running the hot wort down to the chiller, uh, sanitize everything, ran a little bit of it up through the wort chiller and back into the kettle. Um, it's still boiling, so that'll sanitize everything. That way when we get ready to chill everything down, we'll be good and sanitized, ready to go, and put it in the carboy and drop the yeast to it. All right, and we are chilling, so we got the water coming from the faucet down to the counterflow chiller. I like to run back up into the kettle and just kind of cool it down just a little bit before we start pitching it into the fermenters. 
hot water running down the drain. Our uh, two fermenters are ready to go. And we will be pitching yeast shortly. I'd say that's right at 1060, wouldn't you? Somewhere around there. Yeah, Real close. Yeah, maybe. Somewhere around in there. Yep. Been mighty good. All right, two times. Second, first car boy's full. And the second one filling up. It's almost the end of a successful brew day. Not too many calamities. <laughs> Just enough to make it fun. So, we will follow up on this one with a tasting. We're going to dry hop with, Mark's going to dry hop with some whole leaf, I'm going to dry hop with some pellet, so we'll see if there's any differences from that, as well as the yeast. So, looks like that's all for this brew day. Alright, so we made it through another brew day. Um, everything went well, no problems at all. Um, overshot our gravity a little bit, but not too bad. And uh, I think that calls for a cheers. Cheers! Mm. What do you think of that Falconer's Flight IPA? It is actually fantastic. Falconer's is a uh, hot blend that's been on my screen for a while. Something I wanted to try, and I'm glad to have this because um, it's very complex for being a single hop. It's wonderful. I like it. Definitely want to play around with it. Um, on the gravity, uh, according to my brew in the bag, we should run about 75% efficiency, which would put us at 1.058. Oh, okay. I think we ended up at about 1.060 roughly. So we're right there on your system too. And I've been consistently hitting that with brew in the bag. So electric brewing's awesome. I really, really like it. You know, all the bells, whistles, pumps, lights, and laser beams and <laughs> whatnot kind of confuse a simple brew in the bagger like me. But, hey, you know, it beats being outside when it's, uh, you know, the fog is melting or freezing or whatever the <laughs> hell is going on out there. It's craziness. And I'm glad to have brewed inside. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Hey, I got a question, though. Yo. Why is it called Cottontail Pale Ale? Cottontail Pale Ale. That's a good question, Brian. And you know what? Oddly enough, you're the first person, after three years of brewing this and giving this beer out to my friends, neighbors, and family... You're the only person that's ever asked me that. Inquiring minds want to know. There you go. Well, when I developed this recipe, um, I wanted it to be the beer that I wanted to drink, that I wanted on tap. You know, it's my ideal perfect beer. And when I was sitting there trying to come up with a name for it, I couldn't come up with anything good. I was sitting at my uh, brew target software on my Linux computer, looking out at my garden, looking at my hot plants, looking for some inspiration. And oddly enough... A little brown rabbit came up and was sniffing around my, my hops plants. Poofy white tail. There you go. Cottontail pale ale. Hey, you know, the, the names of beers have been inspired from wilder and crazier events. So Indeed. That, uh, that makes total sense. That's but how it uh, happened. So, um, True story. Yeah. <laughs> For real. For real. So, uh, till next time, um, happy Homebrew Wednesday. And uh, raise a glass. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Electric brewing for the win. <laughs> Some movie I was in, she said, I thought it was called Bearded Heat. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, we can't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs>